hello and welcome to this little blog. Um, I'm hoping um, in this part of the playlist to show a bit about the pre-baiting. I've had a few questions on Facebook and in the comments of the previous videos about our pre-baiting strategy between sessions. Um, I think it's a good point in the series to show what we've been doing in between sessions. Now the last blog that's gone live is part four um, and in that we had that lovely 18 pound um, mirror carp but since then the rivers have opened and I found it hard to find time and Mark's company this time of year being a particle carp company mega busy but the important part is we've continued to come down here put bait on the spots to keep them clear and hopefully in this video um, there'll be a chance for Mark to talk about what bait we're putting in and we might get to see the the um, the impact of that bait I'm hoping to get some underwater footage of the spots that we're fishing to see what impact our baiting has had on them spots and how it's cleared them really quickly the baits that we've been putting in when we've been baiting up the, the obviously tiger up boil is the bait we're going to be using not been putting much of that in in between sessions because you know it, it's one of them baits that you know that the bream are going to eat it as well but it's the bait that you want to fish with so you just want to give them a little bit for when you turn up but the main component we've been using to clear the spots is particle and what we'll do now is Mark's going to talk a little bit about what's in this why it's in it and what he hopes to achieve by putting the mix together that he has yeah so thanks for that Danny um, as Danny explained we've been down pre-baiting on a number of occasions through the week and the weeks before and obviously what we've been trying to do is, is get the spots cleared obviously for our presentations um, and what we've been putting on it is, is the party mix from Cheshire Particle obviously and it obviously contains hemp, maize, tears and tiger nuts and obviously we'll be fishing tiger nuts and tiger nut boily so the thought process was to get a good grubbing mix down there and we all know the grubbing properties particle has anyway to get them on the spots get all the, the, the bits in the bream, the roach, whatever else is swimming around down there smacking all our spots down and keeping them hard getting all, rid of all the weed and obviously the, the party mix is, is doing that see there, it's just it's a proper little grubbing mix it's got a bit of everything in it really but it does what we, we've wanted it to do really um, and obviously now when we come to fishing we'll be fishing like tiger nuts and tiger nut boiling so that's that's the base of what we've been putting out in the previous baiting uh, pre bait sessions and the weeks before that's, that's already been out there so we know that when we come to fish the spots are clear they're hard they're polished and then we're going to be putting tiger nuts and tiger nut boiling around it so the fish have had some off free offerings for, for weeks leading up to it. So what you're going to see next, we're going to show a couple of pictures of the spots before and the spots after. And how, and how the particle has made them what they are and what we wanted them to be. So we'll show you that next. Right, so you've just heard from Mark there about the mix that we've been using and why and the components of it. So let's have a look at the water that we're dealing with and as you can see here with the margins you're dealing with thick weed and vegetation and that goes below the water so that's the type of stuff that you've got to try and work around and if you want to fish areas you've got to try and clear paths to it but also present a bait amongst it in clear patches so that is an example of a raw swim before we even try and present a bait in the area Let's go and have a look at the, you know, a swim that we've been pre-baiting and how the weed, just visually looking at it, is different. So that's a completely virgin swim, a random spot on the canal and how it looked before we even started fishing it. You've just seen the swim up there and as you can see here, on this bit here, oh you've still got the weed as thick as it was up there and in the margin, but the spot we've been feeding it's clear and obviously your line to it is clear so your lines pinned to the bottom and the carp have got the security of the inside weed but you can see visually there just how clear that spot is 
Right, so what I'm going to attempt to do now, I've had a word with my mate Gary and he's going to bring his GoPro up and we're just going to have a look on, see if we can see on the bottom just what these spots look like on the bottom and what this bait has done to them spots. So we're going to attempt to do it, it is quite a coloured canal but we're going to do our best and hopefully when he puts the camera down there we'll have a good idea of what impact that, that um, baiting up has done. Right, so swim number one and this is the completely natural swim and this is you know how the swim will have looked before we started applying the bait and as the camera moves down you can see there's a lot of weed coming up off the bottom but also on the bottom there's quite a lot of debris and as you can see i think mr perch coming in to investigate but as you can see there there's a lot of weed on the bottom and quite you know a difficult place to present a bait and this just shows what the swim would have looked like before we started applying the bait to the swim. Right, and this is when things start getting interesting. Um, from a fishing point of view, the camera now moves into one of the live swims that we've been fishing. Um, this swim here was the swim I caught a um, 17 pound common carp from in part three and an 18 pound mirror carp from in part four so we've been keeping up with the series this is the swim that it come from and as you can see there's a few things that were instantly um noticeable when we looked at the footage as you can see the bits of sweet corn and maize in the swim i'm amazed that we haven't been getting more line bites because i've spaced out the baiters in the swim um but from a clearing point of view you can see the weed, there's no weed at all. There's a sprig in the background, I think. And we're about to move angle into a different part of it where you can see that a bit clearer. And as you can see here in the right hand corner, there's just a tiny sprig of weed in the swim. But as you can see from a fishing point of view, it's a completely hard, clear bottom that Mark was talking about in the earlier piece that he did on the, on the blog. And compared to the first clip, a much better place to present a bait so hopefully you know that shows just what the two different swims look like underwater as you can see there you can see there quite clearly the effectiveness of the um, particle for clearing the spots that we've been fishing on um, we're a couple of weeks ahead now as, as you can tell um, hairs cut and everything so you can tell a couple of weeks ahead from where this video has just gone live and uh, the, the video opened our eyes a bit, didn't it? Yeah. Um, when we've looked back over the footage, the spots were clear. We, when the lead, Mark will tell you from his carp fishing, when the lead's going down, we knew they were kind of clear, didn't we? But when we've had a look over the GoPro footage, I don't think any of us were... No, to realise how clear they were. They, they were... And, and either side, there's bits of weed off the spot, so we, we know our spots Yeah, clean. And it was just sprigs. Um, of weed and we obviously we've had the advantage of seeing it in its raw form haven't we yeah, yeah. Um, we tried the best to show what the swim looked like before with examples of what we saw when we arrived but I, the, the underwater footage has come out better than any of us expected um, I have to say thank you to my mate Gary for that he did um, use the GoPro and we you know we got some good footage didn't we did, yeah, yeah. Um, we had obviously like I said a couple of weeks ahead now and um, a couple of carp ahead as you'll see in the upcoming blogs and what this what this video I hope has shown is you can use particle what it's taught me is you can use particle uh, but you need to use it for what you want it to do oh, yeah, um, yeah. and the main feature of particle is the grubbing properties and the mix that you've seen in this video was what we've been putting on the spots to get all the fish in to clear the spots there was um, all bits and it wasn't there. Yeah, it was a party mix, which is like hemp, maize, tears and tigers. Yeah. Because obviously we put we had the tigers in it. Yeah. Because we knew we were going to be using tigers further along the line. Yeah. Which we have done. And great effect. As you can see, the earlier bit of the video was recorded a bit earlier than when we did this, but did the spots, it, it did what we wanted it to do. Looking from this point onwards, the video is going to be seen by people who maybe want to adopt this baiting approach into their canal fishing or lake fishing. Now, when we seen how clear the spots were, um, it, let, it allowed us to put bigger particles on because we knew how, spot, how clean the spots were. Um, we knew just to keep them ticking over once a week, we've put the mix you've seen in this video on once a week to keep the spots clear. But on the other baiting up, we've gone with much bigger particles 
and because we know the spots are clear on the video from what we've seen from the underwater footage it's allowed us to put much bigger particles into the swim so in there we've got tiger nuts and maize and once a week we've been putting tiger nuts and maize on them clear spots that is basically trying to get just the carp isn't it yeah. to get just the carp you're going to get the bream in but that mix isn't to clear the spots really and that's one thing that i wanted to show in this video is par how particle you've got to pick the right particle for what you want it for to your do approach yeah for what yeah. you want, want to get out of it really you know if you want a particle that's clearing your spots you start off clearing your spots but then the next mix is it's scaling up really it's scaling, it's scaling up scaling the baits up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you scale up the size of the baits now we know the spots are clear so when we're baiting up with this it's really going to be, it's only going to bring bream and carping, isn't it really yeah, yeah, yeah. the roach might pick at the, the even the bits of maize in that are quite big so that's how the baiting up approach has gone and, and what i wanted to do in this mid mid series vlog is covered everything um we've covered the development of the rigs and in the next video that you'll see you'll see how i've caught we, well we've both come to a point where we're happy with a method now aren't we when oh, we yeah. the baiting up we know it works and as you'll see in the coming blogs there's been quite a few carp on the blank and it showed that the baiting ups worked, hasn't it? Yeah. And I mean, in the beginning we were chopping, changing, fiddling, tweaking, but now we, just, we were happy with what we've got. You're we're, confident is yeah, the main thing, isn't it? The same rig goes out every week, the yeah. same baiting approach every week. And that's one thing that I wanted to, you know, cover in the blog. It's the middle of the series about, around about, because we're about five videos in. Um, this There's about three more videos to go on after this one. But from this point onwards, that is what we've been, that's where we've got to, hasn't it? Yeah. I know now we're doing a video a few weeks down the line to put an outro to this video. But I think that's a good in a way because it shows um, how it's developed. The progress yeah. all along the way, along the journey, really. Yeah. That's what it is, isn't it? And I must admit, when you know where the spots are on the, on the canal, you can see, you can see, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, when you know, to the naked eye you don't, but when we walk along, because we know where the spots are, you can just tell from a bed of weed to a blank to a bed of weed yeah you know what I mean? and the hardest part has been getting a line to the spots really yeah, hasn't yeah, it? that's the hardest thing yeah you yeah. know really getting a clean line to the spots has been quite hard but without putting a snail trailer pellet or you know particle all the way along you're not going to do that so the video comes to an end now this little um you know bit of the series in the playlist about how we've baited up and hopefully it answers a lot of the questions that i've been getting about our baiting up approach um, it is a part of the blog that has been missing, really. Um, but from this point on, as you'll see in the videos, you'll see um, there's plenty of nice carp to come, isn't there? Yeah. There's a lot to come in the series. We've had some... Lovely, lovely wild ones. We wild, wild, wild carp. Ones. Wild well, carp. wild, really, basically. And they? from this point on, I think it really takes off, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've had some nice results, don't get me wrong. I've, I've caught fish on this I never even imagined I would, I'd, I'd catch. But from this blog on debating up approach you've seen in this video is exactly what we've done and yeah there's some nice fish to come some nice adventures to come so yeah tight lines in your own fishing and we'll see you in the next video